Okay, assalamu alaikum. So welcome to our uh, computer vision module four. So today we are going to talk about the artificial intelligence and how it operates. So before that, uh, you just need to know that if I have an image and in this image I have, let's say, a face of a human and I want to um, extract the features. How do I extract the features? So different features, maybe the eye size, the distance between the eyes, the length of the uh, head, the shape of the nose, the shape of the mouth, all of these are considered features when it comes to a human face. Now, the goal of a feature extraction is to generate features that exhibit high information packing properties, such as extract the information from raw data that are most relevant for discrimination between classes, extract features from low uh, within the class variety and high uh, between the class uh, uh, variability, discard redundant information. Information in an image uh, FIJ must be reduced to enable the reliable classification. So, a uh, 64 by 64 image contains 200 and uh, 4096 dimensions, which is a very big feature space. So, for example, if we have this uh, moon rover and it's moving on the moon and we want to extract its features. So, different types of features exist. So, we have the color features, we have the grace level features, we have the shape features and we have the histogram features. So, the shape features uh, is quite the easiest one where we take the uh, moon rover as it is here and we basically uh, generate a binary image where one is an object pixel, zero is a background. We can calculate the area by summing all the ones. We can find the center of mass by multiplying the uh, row value by the um, value, whether it's, if it is zero or one, and then we can find M10 and M01 and then we can find i dash and j dash which is m10 over the area and m01 over the area over here now we can find also the moments of inertia which is uh, uh, the uh, mu20 and mu02 and mu11 one is for the row one is for the column and one is for the diagonal these are the moments of the inertia if you find the moments of inertia of an object, then you can use these moments of inertia to calculate the orientation of the um, uh, particular object. We have the eccentricity, which is how much round is the object. We can find all this information from the moments of inertia. We can find the minor axis and the major axis that enclose the ellipse that covers this object. All of these are considered shape features. Now, these features will be fed to an artificial neural network. This artificial neural network will be used to classify that object. Now, the concept between behind, sorry, uh, uh, computer uh, vision is based on basically artificial neural networks and machine learning. So, some people call it uh, connectionist, parallel distributed processing, neural computations, adaptive networks. However, it was uh, discovered in 1943 and the first uh, learning was in, in 1949. And uh, we are going to talk about the multilayer perceptron basically and the perceptron neural networks in this class. So the biological inspiration came from our brain. The brain has extensively studied by has been extensively studied by this, the scientists. Vast complexity prevents all but randomity of understanding, even behavior of individual neurons in extremely complex uh, situations. The features of the brain: it has tens of billions of neurons. Neurons switch at a time of ten to the power minus three seconds. Face recognition can be done in 0.1 seconds and uh, on average each neuron has several thousands of connections hundreds of operations per seconds hundred a uh, high degree of parallel computation distributed representation die of frequency um, 
compensate of problems by massive paralysis. So uh, our brain uh, has pattern recognition, has uh, association, complexity, noise tolerance. The Van Neumann architecture uses a single processing unit, tens of millions of operations per second, and absolute arithmetic precision. On the other hand, the machine has calculations, precision, and logic. The brain uses many slow, unreliable process processors acting in parallel when compared to a machine. So the idea came from a neuron. The neuron is only the uh, only uh, fires uh, if its signals exceed a, cent, uh, a certain amount of threshold for a short period. So it's just like flashing lights. The synapses uh, is uh, very strength. Good connections allowed a large signal. Uh, slight connections allow only weak signals, and uh, synapses can be either uh, extentory or inhibitory. Uh, a neuron has a cell body, which is uh, this one over here, uh, branching uh, inputs. As you can see, all of these are our uh, branching inputs. Structures or the dead trains, these are the branching outputs uh, structures as an exon. This is our branching output, which is our exon. So the neural network will be built in the same idea. Here we have our inputs. They are weighted, multiplied by weights, sent to the neuron, and neuron will send them out to the outputs. Many simple neuron like thousands of switching units. Uh, many weighted interconnections among units and highly parallel distributed processing. Uh, appropriate problem domains for neural networks. Input. In, uh, is high dimensional discrete or real values. Output is discrete or real values. Output is a vector of values. Form of target functions is unknown. Humans do not need to interpret the results, which is basically the what we call the black box model. So this is the perceptron. We have x1, x2, x to xn are our inputs. w1, w2, wn are our weights. Sigma is our summing function. This is our bias. So basically we multiply the input by the weight and then we sum them all using the summing function plus the weight. Then we take them to a thresholding function and this thresholding function will then be sent to the output. Basically the training is done by changing the weights that are used to connect the inputs to the neuron. So the perceptron learning rule, wi is equal to wi plus delta w. Delta w is basically the learning uh, weight. So delta w is equal to nu t minus uh, r v x i, where o is our output and t is our actual, actual output. So t is the target, o is the perceptron output. Basically, this is our error. Basically, this is our error. Nu is the smallest constant, which is usually called the learning rate. Uh, usually, the learning rate will be from uh, 0.1 up to 1. We, we put it to 1 when it's a simple problem. When we want the learning rate to be slow, we can put it uh, to 0.1. But basically, uh, delta W is uh, learning rate multiplied by the error multiplied by the input. If the output is correct, T is equal to the W, so the weights are not changed. If the output is incorrect, the weights are changed such that the output of the perceptron has a new weight which is closer to T. The algorithm converge to the correct classification if the training of the data is linearly separable and if N is sufficiently uh, small. Linearly separable, we will talk about it later on. So supervised learning. Supervised learning, if I tell you uh, 1 multiplied by 1 is equal to 1, and 5 multiplied by 2 is equal to 10, and 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 12. So if I'm giving you the problem and I'm giving you the answer, this is called supervised learning. So the training set contains the inputs and the targets. The, the training set contains the inputs and the targets, and also the test set. The training and test set, both of them, they have the input and the target. This is called supervised learning. Okay, so the perceptron uh, training for the AND gate, 
we have W is equal to 1, W is equal to 1, T is equal to 1.5. Uh, for the OR, it's 0.5, and for the NOT, it's minus 0.49 with a weight of minus 1. The linear threshold was used, and the weights, values, and the threshold values were given over here to give our simple uh, output network. So, for example, if we are uh, going to do the output here, weight is equal to minus uh, 1.5 okay w is equal to minus 1.5 w is equal to 1 x and y multiplied by t t which is equal to 0 then we can get our output perceptron training so over here how do we get the weights x is equal x y and we want to find the output which is for the AND gate remember the, uh, the, uh, the biasing is equal to minus 1 from here the biasing is equal to minus 1 from here and it is multiplied by 1.5 which is the biasing from here so what are the weight values we can initialize them randomly and we start the training. So we start by the multiplication, x multiplied by 0 0.5, 0 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is 0, y multiplied by point, minus 0 0.4, which is 0, 0 and 0, it will, and minus 1 multiplied by 0.3. Again, remember we have our function, which will give us the outputs as 0. So here we did not get the actual value, which is uh, 0. So this is the first epoch. Okay, this is, this is the first epoch, and as you can see, there is no weight training as long as there is uh, no uh, difference in the output. So the epoch is the presentation of the entire training set to the neural network. In this case, the AND function and epoch consists of four sets. An error is the value of the amount at which the output of by the network differs from the target value. The target value is when the training of the network is only presented with the input. The output is the output of the neuron. IJ is the input being presented to the neuron. WJ is the weight. And LR is the learning rate. So then we talk about decision boundaries and how we define our decision boundary. If we have two classes, we have class A and we have class B, we can have a decision boundary between these two classes so this is called linearly separable problem linearly separable problem as you can see we can have different uh, linear separable problems but this is not a linear separable problem which is the x or as we are going to talk about it so hyperplane proportions this is an extra layer of convex hull in the area so we can create more more complex uh, neural networks so it's if it was a single layer a neural network then we can have only one lines if we have two layers then we ha can have two lines if we have multiple layers we can separate the classes in their corresponding values so that's all for this week and we will continue inshallah in the next